Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to R.A. Faginal Hall. Elmhurst College women's basketball taking on the Big Blue of Millican University. Set to tip off here momentarily. My name is Kevin Jude. I'll have the call for you here this afternoon as we get the starting lineups now of the Blue Jays. We'll run down both teams for you. Uh, com Elmhurst coming in looking to continue their spot in the top half of the CCIW uh, standings. They're at five and three overall in league play right now. That puts them tied for third with North Park. Just a game out of first place with Wheaton and Illinois Wesleyan at six and two, sharing the top spot. Milliken struggling big time this year. The Big Blue seven and 12 overall. Milliken looking for its first victory in the CCIW entering today's game. They are 0 and eight and have not won a conference game, have not won since December. Looking at the starting five for each of these squads, for, um, first for Milliken, Emily Schultz, the sophomore guard, Rachel Weber, a junior guard, joined down low, Alyssa Sacklick, the 5'11 senior, the leading scorer for this squad, 17.6 points, nine rebounds per, cont uh, per contest for Sacklick. Devin Curry, a sophomore guard, is there as well, and Emma Hoyer down low, a six-foot junior, averaging 5.2 points, a strong rebounder at 7.3 per contest. For the Blue Jays, Claire Monroe, the 5'5 senior guard, averaging 8.5 points a game. She's joined in the backcourt by Lisa Logan, running the point. 5'7 freshman, averaging 5.3 points per contest. Out on the wings, it's Michaela Coomer, a junior transfer, averaging 6.8 points per contest. Kayla Jones starts down low, 5'9 sophomore, averaging 9.1 points per game. And in the paint for the Blue Jays, Michaela Epper, the 5'11 sophomore, averaging nearly a double-double at 15.8 points and 9.8 rebounds per contest as we are just about set to get things started here. Jumping things off for the Blue Jays, it'll be Eppard and Hoyer for the Big Blue. Eppard has the tap, but it's won and controlled by Milliken and Sacklek. This is Schultz knifing into the lane, goes up, lays it in, counted in the foul. Nine seconds, all it takes for Milliken to grab the first bucket of the contest. As Schultz knifes right into the lane, splits the defense, gets the scoop layup to fall, and the foul as well goes against Coomer. Free throw on its way, good. Quick start for Milliken with a three-point play. Here's Eppard out on the block. Kick out. Jones for three. Leaves it short off the front rim. Coomer's got the board strong to the bucket and lays it in. Nobody put a body on Michaela Coomer. Collects it strong to the basket with the step and lays it in for the easy bucket. Schultz leaves for Hoyer. Working around the arc. This is Weber. Sackluck starts to drive in, lost the handle on it, throws it to the corner, it's thrown away. The last touch by Milliken, it'll belong to the Blue Jays out of bounds. First turnover of the contest. So Elmhurst will bring it up out of the dead ball, trailing by a point, less than a minute into this contest. Coomer into Eppard, back out Coomer, starts to drive in, bounce pass down low to Eppard, Shot is too strong, high off the backboard, and the rebound collected by Hoyer and the Big Blue. Here's Weber. Leaves for Schultz, back up top of the key to Hoyer. Devin Curry, her first touch of the game, three coming from the wing, off the mark from Weber, rebound grabbed by Monroe. Two players for Milliken go down under the basket. It's five on three for Elmers if they hurry. Jones finishes the fast break, started by Coomer, and Elmers has their first lead. A couple of Milliken players just got tangled up underneath the basket. Curry and Sacklack just both lost their footing in an easy break for the Blue Jays at five on three. In the paint, Sacklack steps around Eppard, lost the handle, threw it away. Logan comes away with the loose ball, will push up the near far sideline. Logan starting, trying to feed that one into Coomer. It's deflected loose. Eppard had it momentarily, jump ball. It's going to belong to the Blue Jays as Epper does a nice job fighting for it. Looked like it was going out of bounds. I think it went off of a Milliken leg and stayed in play. Here's the replay 
on that fast break from Kayla Jones. Elmhurst will inbound. Eppert starts to drive in from the wing, kicks back out Jones. Corner, Coomer lines up the three, off the rim, no. Rebound cleared by Sacklack and Milliken. Rachel Weber brings it up the far sideline. Leaves for Sacklack on the wing. Here's Curry, thought about driving in, picks up her dribble. Shot clock winding down to eight, driving in is Sacklack. Lost the handle on the shot a little bit, side of the rim. Rebound grabbed by Eppert and the Blue Jays. Eppert to Monroe, back inside Eppert. Kick back out to Logan. They'll swing it around, find Eppert on the block. One dribble, up with the left hand, no, and the rebound cleared by Hoyer. There's Rachel Schultz. Looks to drive, kick out. Hoyer, jumper from the free throw line, good. Emma Hoyer, no one near her defensively, just sets her feet and takes the jump shot from the free throw line and knocks it down. Milliken back in front by a point. Eppert hands the Monroe up top. Pulls it back behind the arc, now leaves for Eppert. Kicks to Jones out on the wing. Jones starts to drive and gets it to Eppert as she's getting up off the ground and she lays it in. Great timing for Michaela. Eppert was up on her knees after she fell down making the pass, collected it from Jones and laid it in. Here's Emily Schultz working on Logan. Free throw line jump shot, no good. Rebound is grabbed by Jones and the Blue Jays. Jones will outlet to Logan up the far side. Logan strong to the basket contact and they're gonna get uh, Logan for a charge. Schultz got there first, says the official as Lisa Logan trying to get to the bucket. See it right here, Schultz is there in position, had her feet set. Couple substitutions, Capellas in for Milliken. Bounce pass on the baseline, finding the cutting player is Schultz goes up and scores. Great feed from Kelsey Going who just checked in as well. Here's a pull-up three from Logan. That one rattles off the front. No, Going's got the board. Monroe takes it right out of her hands, and a jump ball. Jump ball will belong to Milliken. Nice job by Kelsey Monroe. She at least wins the arrow back in the Blue Jays' favor. So the replay you see right to the bucket. Good feed, given perfect feed on the baseline for Emily Schultz cutting in. So Milliken leads 7-6, 5.50 to go here in the opening quarter. Here's Weber, starts to drive in, leaves for going in the corner. Hoyer spins inside the paint, little eight footer, good. Nice touch from Emma Hoyer inside. At nine to six now in favor of Milliken. Eppard finds Jones cutting inside the paint. Shot goes up off the back of the iron, no good. Rebound cleared by Milliken. Here come the big blue. Schultz will put on the brakes from the right side and work it back around the arc. Capellas leaves for Schultz, starts to drive in, her pass thrown away, stolen by Jones, trying to feed it into Hoyer, tried to force it, Kayla Jones got the hands on it. Courtney Spencer leaves for Monroe, three on its way, too strong, rebound cleared by Milliken in the big blue. Capellas has the board and she'll push it up herself. Spencer out on her, will drop it back out up top and the big blue will reset with 18 on the shot clock. Lob inside for going is stolen away, tipped out of there by Eppert and finally collected by Jones. Monroe bounce pass to Spencer, picks up the dribble, she throws it away. Milliken back the other way with numbers. Here comes Weber trying to put, excuse me, Schultz rather, working on Jones and Jones stuffs it out of bounds and blocked it off of Schultz, Elmhurst ball. Great defensive play by Kayla Jones, blocked the shot and blocked it off of Schultz, so it'll be Elmhurst ball. Blocked it and went right off the back shoulder. Couple substitutions now for the Blue Jays. Hannah Henderson in for the first time. Annette Stidham in as well. Also Erica Johnson, she controls it right now for the Blue Jays. Leaves for Jones out on the left wing. Lob for Stidham, right back to Jones. Cuts in, her shot's rejected by going. 
but Jones tracks down the rebound. Spencer will pop the three, leaves it short off the front rim, rebound battled for underneath and collected by Schultz. And now a foul gonna go against Elmhurst. Henderson whistled for the foul, her first team's third. 4.04 to go in the first quarter. Milliken sets up the offense. Capellas to Schultz. Thought about the jump shot, doesn't have it. Instead, leaves it for Sacklack cutting in. Her right hand layup, no good. Rebound grabbed by Henderson. She wants to push for the Blue Jays. Here's Stidham, the trailer. Kick back out Spencer. And Spencer will slow things down for the Blue Jays. They'll reset with 16 on the shot clock. Henderson dumps it in for Johnson. Back out Stidham from the free throw line. To Jones, down to eight on the shot clock. Jones walks it back up top of the key, down to five. Will pull up the three. Too strong. No, it's in and out. Thought it was too strong. Going to collect the back of the iron. Fought for by Henderson and rebounded by the Blue Jays. A fresh, 20, a fresh 30. Henderson lines up the three. That one no good. Gets her own rebound, though, and Elmhurst will have another chance. Third opportunity for the Blue Jays. Courtney Spencer leaves for Johnson, looking inside for Stidham, doesn't have her. Cross-court pass, they come to Jones with nine on the shot clock. Jones steps inside the free throw line and connects. A little 12-footer from Kayla Jones. Make it 9-8 in favor of Milliken, 2.30 to go in the opening quarter. Kelsey going. Leaves for Capellas. Walking around is Sadler. Sadler for Schultz. Schultz starts to drive in, kicks back out. Free throw line extension jumper on its way and good from Saklik. To the left of the line, she knocks down the jump shot. Milliken back up by three. Spencer to Jones, pulls up from 12. Left that one short. Henderson fights for it and knocks it out of bounds off of Schultz. It'll belong to the Blue Jays. Scorch. Kelly Skorczewski coming in. Kalia Summerlin getting her first look for Elmhurst with 2.01 to go in the first. Blue Jays looking to inbound. They will lob it up top of the key to Johnson. Johnson drives to the basket strong with the right hand. Left it short, but she's fouled. Foul goes against Devin Curry. Her first, just the first foul. of the quarter against Milliken. Johnson to shoot two, hits the first. These two teams met earlier this year. Down in Decatur uh, earlier this month, January 9th, 88-73, Elmhurst victorious. Second free throw is no good. Schultz has the board for the big blue with Milliken up a bucket. 145 left in the opening quarter. Here's Sadler. The freshman dribbles it back up top of the key. Leaves for Sacklick. Shot clock winds down to 10. Long jumper on its way from Sacklick. Short. Nobody there for the Blue Jays, though. Rebound fought for. Now thrown back to empty space, and Elmhurst has it. Spencer ahead to Henderson. She can fly down the floor. She goes up and layup rattles out. No good. And the rebound collected by Milliken. And now Milliken with some numbers. Four on three if they hurry. Lob inside, and we're going to get a foul here. No shot attempt as Summerlin had locked up Kelly Skorczewski. Eppard coming back to the floor for the Blue Jays. Rachel Weber back for the Big Blue as well. Fresh 30 on the shot clock after the foul. 1-10 to go in the quarter. Top of the key, here's Sacklack for Schultz. Work it around to Curry, starts to drive in. Curry strong to the basket. They're going to give her the count that and the foul. Thought they may have blown that one dead beforehand. No, give her the continuation. Count the basket, Spencer whistled for the foul. 
driving around Spencer. Yep, shot was clearly off. Good call by the official. And Curry will try to complete the three-point play with Milliken up by four. Curry hits the free throw. Milliken, her biggest lead of the night at 14-9 with a minute to go in the opening quarter. Summerlin reverses her dribble, drops it down in for Eppard, kick back out. Johnson, Summerlin takes the three from the corner, no. Rebound loose on the floor, pulled down by Milliken. Outlet ahead to Skorczewski, wide open to the bucket. She lays it up and in. Good feed from Curry to Skorczewski, and Milliken has a seven-point cushion with 35 seconds to go in the quarter. Here's Henderson. Starts to drive in and a whistle and a foul. Coach Lori Kern's not happy about that one, but Elmhurst will get a fresh 30. 1.4 differential, shot clock to game clock. Spencer looking to get it in. Lofted in over the head of Eppert, and the ball comes back loose to Eppert, and she's fouled on the floor before she can get to the bucket. An alert foul by Skorczewski. You've got a couple to give. You're not going to put the Blue Jays at the line just yet. Sixteen nine, Milliken, 28.9. Shot clock now off. Spencer lobs that one in. Stolen away by Milliken, and a foul on Johnson is going to put Milliken to the line for two free throws and attempt an opportunity to add to this lead. So Skorczewski will go to the line to shoot two. Has two points already, already exceeding her per game average, came in just averaging 1.9 points per contest. Four new bodies for the Blue Jays. It is now the starting five completely back on the floor. Don't check that, Katie Swanson is in for Elmhurst, along with Coomer, Jones, and Monroe. One more for Skorczewski, she's got four. Milliken's got a nine point lead at 18 to nine. There's Monroe up the right side. Hands back up top to Swanson, seeing her first action of the quarter. Swanson to Jones on the left side, 14 to go. Jones threw that one into the corner. Swanson collects, seven to shoot. Goes up with the right hand, no good. Eppert collects the rebound, goes up and scores. Nice follow through by Michaela Eppert as she puts that one in. Cuts the Milliken lead down to seven after the first quarter. 10 minutes in the books. Milliken leads it 18 to 11. You're watching Elmhurst College Women's Basketball live on BlueJayTV.com. The first game of a doubleheader today. The Elmhurst men's basketball team ranked sixth in the nation. They're hosting the Milliken Big Blue as well. That one coming up immediately after this one. Tip off currently scheduled for 4 p.m. Luke Tanaka will have the call of that contest for you. So Milliken in that opening half, it was a tight game early, a little back and forth, but the Big Blue picking up their shooting, 53.8%, 7 of 13. Elmer's just 5 of 19, 26.3% from the floor. Neither team can hit a three-pointer right now, a combined 0 for 8, but the majority of those are from Elmhurst. Blue Jays can't hit one from downtown at the moment, 0 for 7 from beyond the arc. Milliken four of four from the stripe, rebounding battle in favor of the Big Blue just by one, 11 to two. Milliken has led for the majority of the contest, hit the opening bucket nine seconds in, led for almost eight minutes of that opening quarter. We'll reset the floor for the start of the second quarter. Same five that ended the first quarter on the floor for the Blue Jays, Eppard, Coomer, Monroe, Jones, and Swanson for the Big Blue. It's Weber, Capellas, Skorczewski, Sacklock, and Schultz. Katie Swanson will bring it up for Elmhurst, their ball to start the second half. Trailing by seven, bounce pass into Eppard. Good step around her defender, counted in the foul. 
Nice move by Michaela Eppard. Good pass inside the paint from the Blue Jays. Eppard, a couple dribbles, splits the defense, and then steps around the defender for the bucket. She'll have one free throw to try to convert the three-point play. Knocks it down. 18-14 now as the Blue Jays connect. Just 12 seconds in, slice that lead down to four. Skorczewski above her head, brings the ball back out up top. Down low, they come back to Skorczewski, goes up, can't get the layup to foul, but they're going to get Swanson for a block on the baseline. Judge for yourself if she was there in time or not. Official didn't think so. So two shots for Skorczewski, already with four. Make it five. Senior out of Schaumburg High School. Like I said, entered the game coming in, averaging just 1.9 and 1.7. Second one is no good, but the rebound collected by Sacklack and an offensive rebound. Up top, Schultz. Skorczewski into the corner it comes for Weber. Lines up the three, no good. Rebound by Monroe. Here's Jones, pulls up. Her jump shot short off the front rim. Rebound grabbed by Milliken. Here come the Big Blue wanting to run. Weber didn't have the numbers. We'll pull it back out, and the Big Blue will set up with 20 to go on the shot clock. Dumped down in the blocks for Sacklock. Working on Eppard, nowhere to go. Throws it into the corner for Weber. Weber driving in, kicks back out. Sacklock the jump shot, no. Eppard there for the board for Elmhurst. Monroe leaves it in the corner for Coomer. Elmhurst works it around the arc. Bounce pass from Swanson to Eppard, and they're going to get Sacklock with a reach in foul, holding on to the arm of Michaela Eppard. 3 fresh bodies for the Big Blue. Going Hoyer and Curry enter the contest. Here's a three-pointer on its way from Monroe, and she connects. Elmhurst needed that one. Their first of eight in eight attempts cuts the lead down to two. Weber out to Curry on the left side. Kick back across, it comes to Weber. She thought about the three momentarily. Changes her mind. Hoyer pulls up from 15, no good. Rebound grabbed by Eppert and the Blue Jays. Monroe wants to run, three on three. Here's Coomer to the basket and a blocking foul going to be called on Milliken. Ori Kern doesn't like that call. I think let's take a... Here's the three-pointer from Monroe. I think that was the right call. It looked like she was shuffling with her the whole way. It's 19-17 in favor of Milliken. Third foul of the quarter on the Big Blue here, just two minutes into it. Lob into Eppard, one dribble, goes up with the left hand, counted in the foul! Michaela Eppard just overpowering the Big Blue down low. A little bit of a mismatch there against the shorter Rachel Weber inside the paint. Eppard, one dribble, left hand scores it. Ties this game at 19, and she can put Elmhurst back in front. Free throw by Eppert is good, and the Blue Jays have their first lead since the opening quarter. 20 to 19. That's a big run here for Elmhurst after being down by nine. Jumper from Schultz way off the mark. Rebound collected by Elmhurst. Here's Monroe. Bounce pass to Jones. Inside Eppard. One dribble back to Swanson. Working around. Corner three for Monroe. No good. And they're going to say Weber stepped on the baseline when she grabbed the rebound. So it'll be Elmhurst ball out of bounds. Twenty to nineteen in favor of the Blue Jays. Monroe, bounce pass, baseline, it comes to Jones, too strong, rebound cleared by going and the Big Blue. 
going. Out wide ahead to Curry. Curry to the bucket. Right hand scoop shot is good. Devin Curry with the bucket. Milliken getting some opportunities here on the fast break. Milliken back in front, 21-20. Inside they come. Eppard strong to the basket, and she's fouled. Michaela Eppard taking over here early on in the second quarter. And another foul goes against Milliken. We'll put Eppard to the line to shoot two. Hand in the back of going and came across the top as well on the shot attempt. First one from Eppard is good. Ties it up at 21 all. One more for the Elmhurst sophomore. Hits that one as well. So Elmhurst back in front. Michaela Eppard's got 12 of the Blue Jays 22. Here's Schultz, strong move to the basket and scores it. Or, uh, check that, that's Weber rather. Rachel Weber just drives right past a couple of Elmhurst defenders and Milliken back in front. Swanson to Coomer, lost the handle but poked out by Milliken. It'll be Elmhurst ball with 19 to shoot. Jones looking to get it in, does so to Eppard. Back out, Monroe for three, good! Claire Monroe hits her second tray of the night. Elmhurst in front, 25-23, six and a half to go in the first half. This is Emily Schultz working on Monroe. Steps inside the free throw line and knocks down the jumper from 10 feet. Not the score back up at 25. Trying to come in again to Eppard and another foul on the big blue. And Elmhurst will be going to the free throw line for the rest of this half with two shots. Milliken in early foul trouble here in quarter number two. Already in the bonus less than four minutes in. Eppard has 12 already. Free throw on its way and good. Four of six shooting from the floor. Five of five shooting from the stripe. One more for the Elmhurst sophomore. The reigning CCAW freshman of the year right now. Second one good as well. Perfect from the stripe tonight. Six of six. She's got 14. Elmhurst has a two-point advantage with 6.10 to go in the half. Schultz. Leaves for Hoyer. Hoyer dumps down to Sacklack. Gets around Coomer with the right-handed dribble and scores the layup. Evens this game back at 27. Here's Monroe pushing it up to the right side for Elmhurst. Swing out to Coomer. Bounce pass into Eppard. Give and go to Coomer. Driving in. And they're going to get Coomer for a charge. See it, it's a give and go here. Coomer to Eppard, back to Coomer. Gonna call, I guess she dropped the shoulder, because said the official. Don't think they had position, but if you drop the shoulder, you can't get the charge called on you. So a foul and a turnover on the Blue Jays gives the ball back to Milliken. Driving in is Weber. She's stripped on the way up by the Blue Jays. They come away with a steal. Monroe outlets to Jones, trying to feed Summerlin. It's broken up nicely by Emily Schultz. So Elmhurst ball out of bounds, 26 on the shot clock. Summerlin in the corner for Monroe. Pulls up for three. That one off the mark. Jones there for the rebound, and she's fouled going up. Elmhurst in position right now, winning the rebound battle underneath. Seventeen to fourteen, the seventh offensive board for the Blue Jays, as Jones knocks down the free throw. Substitution for Milliken. Skorczewski comes back. 
Jones, second free throw off the front rim, no good. Rebound collected by Schultz and Milliken. Weber to Sacklack. Back around, Sacklack now spins, turns from the free throw line and knocks down the jumper. Milliken back in front, 29-28 is a back and forth affair. We've started here in the second quarter after Elmhurst opened on the early run to tie it up. Henderson, Eppard to the bucket with the left hand, no. Rebound fought for underneath. Jones had it momentarily, lost it, and Milliken comes up with it. Here's Schultz on the right side, looking down low. Nice feed to Skorczewski. She goes up and scores it. Skorczewski just picked around the Elmhurst defender, rolled right to the bucket, took the feed from Schultz, and the easy two, Milliken back up by three with 4.25 to go in the half. Eppard kicks out. Summerlin looking for Eppard on the lob. Pass broken up momentarily. Blue Jays recover. Summerlin starts to drive. Cut off on the baseline. They work it back. Free throw line jump shot too strong from Johnson, but Henderson has the board. Eight offensive rebounds for Elmhurst. Summerlin trying to feed Johnson inside. Nicely broken up. Good hustle play by Skorczewski coming back on defense. Jones out, Spencer in for the Blue Jays as 4.02. Elmer says 26 to shoot. Lob it in to Johnson. She's tied up and a jump ball. It's going to be a turnover. Belong to Milliken. Curry back on the floor for the big blue. Here's Skorczewski up top in the corner. Open three on its way from Weber. She connects. Seven straight for Milliken. They've opened up a six-point cushion after being down by one. Henderson to Eppard trying to feed it to Henderson. It's last touch by Milliken out of bounds to the Blue Jays. Inbound pass comes to Summerlin. Spencer back to Johnson, down to 10 on the shot clock. Here's Eppard from the block, starts to drive in, kicks out. Summerlin for three, rattles off the front, no. Henderson, second chance, foul up and scores it. Elmhurst crashing the offensive boards early in this contest so far. Offensive board number nine, 34-30 in favor of the Big Blue. Skorczewski. High up top. Capellas rotate around Skorczewski. Everybody just around the arc right now for the Milliken. Down to eight to shoot. Driving in. Weber in the corner. Three on its way. That one off the front of the rim from Curry. Rebound collected by the Blue Jays. Elmhurst, three on three if they hurry, and Summerlin will pull it out and reset. They've got Henderson wide open under the basket. They find her, and she's rejected by Sacklack from behind. Great defensive recovery by Sacklack to get underneath. Henderson gets loose underneath, no one there, and Sacklack coming across, got the ball. With two and a half to go, Elmhurst will take a 30 second timeout. They trail it by four, 34-30. Elmhurst led it 28-27, Milliken went on a seven nothing run. Blue Jays had the last basket by Henderson on the offensive board, an opportunity for her to add to that right now. 18 to shoot coming out of the timeout, 234 left in the opening half. Mentioned the Blue Jays strong on the glass right now in this half, 10 to two on the offensive boards for the Blue Jays, out rebounding Milliken 21 to 16 overall. Elmer struggling to get it in, pass deflected, but collected by Eppard. 13 to shoot, in low it comes, spinning to the basket is Stidham goes up and scores. Annette Stidham has her first bucket of the game, 34-32, Elmer's within 
a hoop with 2.18 to go. Underneath, good feed, but Milliken can't finish up. Underneath that was Capellas. Rebound to Elmhurst. Had Capellas open, but couldn't finish the layup. Spencer now for the Blue Jays. Bounce pass to Stidham. Jump shot on its way in and out. Henderson follows up and almost <laughs> got yanked to the floor, but another great offensive rebound by Hannah Henderson. She has been all over the boards for the Blue Jays. See her come flying into the picture as Capellas almost took her to the floor and said she'll go to the line to shoot two, a chance to even up the game. Hits the first free throw. Hannah Henderson, uh, six offensive rebounds, seven in the contest total. Very impressive day so far on the boards, and we're still in the first half. Hits the second free throw. We're back even at 34 with a buck 51. Score Chesky. Leaves for Curry. Lost the handle on his Schultz, and we're going to get a kick ball, but it was kicked by Milliken, so it'll be a Elmhurst basketball underneath their own hoop. Kayla Jones enters for Elmhurst. As Courtney Spencer will bring it up with a minute and a half to go. Jones, dispenser out on the right wing. Looking for Eppert inside, doesn't have her. Stidham now free throw line. She'll pull up for the jump shot, no good. Rebound grabbed by Sacklack and Milliken. Milliken will slow it down here on this set as we approach the one minute mark. Long a jumper from Sacklack from about 18 feet, knocks that one down. Puts Milliken in front 36-34 with 55 seconds to go in the half. Lob in for Stidham is stolen away by Sacklack. Here comes the big blue the other way. Schultz has it high up top in front of the Elmhurst bench. Rotate around to Sacklack. Drives on Eppert. Now kicks out to the right wing. Curry. Looking to go baseline, kicks back out. Open three for Weber, in and out, no. As it rattles off the front rim, rebound by Eppert. Here comes Jones, shot clock off with 20 seconds to go. Eppert has it high up top. They're gonna let her have that shot if she wants it. She'll hand it to Henderson and Elmers will be content to hold this for one shot. Shot clock winding down to six seconds, five. Here's Jones, works around her defender, starts to knife in, has to go up, gets it up, and scores it at the buzzer. Kayla Jones lost the handle, collected it, spun into the paint and scores it off the glass as we are dead even at 36 all, headed into the half. Very impressive half of basketball between both these teams. Milliken led it by as many as nine points in the first quarter. Elmer's a strong start to the second half before coming back and evening this score at 36 all. We will step out for a halftime. We will come back with a call of the second, look at the first half stats, and the call of the second half. You're watching Elmer's College Women's Basketball on BlueJTV.com. Welcome to the cultural season at Elmhurst College. Elmhurst is a place of values and conviction. We were founded by 19th century reformers who believed in human potential, loved learning, and had standards. More than 140 years later, we still do. We still attract students and teachers who want to think for themselves and act on principles, who challenge and respect one another, who engage, serve, and celebrate our diverse, dynamic, interdependent world. A few years ago, to be clear about things, we wrote down our core values. This year, we asked some of our students what those values mean to them. Elmer's College is unique in so many ways. Here we really do have values, and my professors know the values, and they push me to be those values. Uh, stewardship and, and faith and community and service, and it really does bring in kind of a, a level of uh, 
just interaction with values that you never go before. But as you kind of develop yourself over the years, you start to realize these values mean so much more and you start to uncover the true meaning behind them. You begin to see equivalencies between your life and the school and then you discover that you're not just in a place of learning, you're also in a place of growing, you're in a place of maturity and, and value exactly that, core values. Intellectual excellence means allowing our minds to grow in ways that we've never thought they could before. It means exploring those new pathways, seeing how we could do things different. It means stepping outside of our box of what we know and what we're comfortable with and taking those risks to really grow and make things better. I think that's really the core of what intellectual excellence is. The professors set the standard of intellectual excellence and that's, that rubs off on the students and I think that's, I feel like that's rubbed off on me. You really have to push yourself. So to know that's actually a value here is pretty important because that's something I value on my own. So if my college values it as well, that means I really belong here. To say that Elmer's College values community I think is an understatement. I think Elmer's College is community in so many ways. Coming to Elmer's College, a small college, it has to be about community. It doesn't really matter who you are or where you've come from, everyone here will just love you for who you are. The fact that every individual and every unique person is allowed to be in an environment together and learn from each other and grow with each other. Just the fact that it's smaller and that you form those one-on-one -on -one relationships, it encourages like creativity and questioning and all the things I wanted out of my college experience. Social responsibility means caring for each individual as a, it, as a person. There are all these people and they're all more important than my general happiness as a single person. You're not only trying to better yourself, but I feel like it also means it's your job that you better your community too. Knowing that there's something larger than yourself and that you can play a part in making someone else's life better. Taking what I learned from my family, that others come before me, and translating that into the entire world. It's really awesome to be in a place where not only are you worrying about academics, but it's also teaching me how to be a better person. To me, stewardship is just being responsible, really thinking about your actions. If I'm going to say that, you know, I believe in this philanthropy, this philanthropy, I think we should do this, I need to follow through with my actions. What I found coming to Elmhurst is that there are lots of people that feel the same way. Um, so it was easy to find a group of people who were so engaged in service and so willing to help. Kind of made me reflect on, you know, what do I value in life? Why am I here? They really did kind of push me to the next level and make me think about that. And I, I think that I'm a better person for it. Values really sh help shape identity. If you really don't understand your values, you're not really understanding a part of who you are. I was more sheltered until I came here. And Elmhurst has really kind of made me step out of my comfort zone and learn more about like what I want to do and what I believe in. Places like the chaplain's office and the Niebuhr Center for Faith and Action give me safe places where I can go to discuss my faith and to discuss my values with people that I know I trust and people that I know I can count on to influence me and to lead me in the right direction. You can never be forced out of your faith or forced into a different kind of faith as long as you're Elmhurst, that you really are given the, the ability to, to take your pick and always have encouragement from your peers. Never shunned or excluded or pressured into something else. Or there's always a place for you. If you believe you're here on this earth for a reason, that's gonna affect the way you live your life. That's gonna affect the way you treat your academics, the way you treat your social life, the way you look at your future and the goals that you have. That, that, those things seem like really big things, but all of that boils down to like the way you live your everyday life. We value intellectual excellence, community, social responsibility, stewardship, faith, meaning, and values. Last year we had... Welcome to the cultural season at Elmhurst College. Elmhurst is a place of values and conviction. We were founded by 19th century reformers who believed in human potential, loved learning, and had standards. More than 140 years later, we still do. We still attract students and teachers who want to think for themselves and act on principles, who challenge and respect one another, who engage, serve, and celebrate our diverse, dynamic, interdependent world. A few years ago, to be clear about things, we wrote down our core values. This year, 
we asked some of our students what those values mean to them. Elmer's College is unique in so many ways. Here we really do have values, and my professors know the values, and they push me to be those values. Uh, stewardship and, and faith and community and service, and it really does bring in kind of a, a level of uh, just interaction with values that you never go before. As you kind of develop yourself over the years, you start to realize these values mean so much more, and you start to uncover the true meaning behind them. You begin to see equivalencies between your life and the school, and then you discover that you're not just in a place of learning, you're also in a place of growing, you're in a place of maturity, and, and value exactly that, core values. Intellectual excellence means allowing our minds to grow in ways that we've never thought they could before. It means exploring those new pathways, seeing how we could do things different. It means stepping outside of our box of what we know and what we're comfortable with and taking those risks to really grow and make things better. I think that's really the core of what intellectual excellence is. The professors set the standard of intellectual excellence and that's, that rubs off on the students and I think that's, I feel like that's rubbed off on me. You really have to push yourself. So to know that's actually a value here is pretty important because that's something I value on my own. So if my college values it as well, that means I really belong here. To say that Elmer's College values community I think is an understatement. I think Elmer's College is community in so many ways. Coming to Elmer's College, a small college, <laughs> it has to be about community. It doesn't really matter who you are or where you've come from, everyone here will just love you for who you are. The fact that every individual and every unique person is allowed to be in an environment together and learn from each other and grow with each other. Just the fact that it's smaller and that you form those one-on-one -on -one relationships, it encourages like creativity and questioning and all the things I wanted out of my college experience. Social responsibility means caring for each individual as a, it, as a person. There are all these people and they're all more important than my general happiness as a single person. You're not only trying to better yourself, but I feel like it also means it's your job that you better your community too. Knowing that there's something larger than yourself and that you can play a part in making someone else's life better. Taking what I learned from my family, that others come before me, and translating that into the entire world. It's really awesome to be in a place where not only are you worrying about academics, but it's also teaching me how to be a better person. To me, stewardship is just being responsible, really thinking about your actions. If I'm going to say that, you know, I believe in this philanthropy, this philanthropy, I think we should do this, I need to follow through with my actions. What I found coming to Elmhurst is that there are lots of people that feel the same way. Um, so it was easy to find a group of people who were so engaged in service and so willing to help. Kind of made me reflect on, you know, what do I value in life? Why am I here? They really did kind of push me to the next level and make me think about that, and I, I think that I'm a better person for it. Values really sh help shape identity. If you really don't understand your values, you're not really understanding a part of who you are. I was more sheltered until I came here, and Elmhurst has really kind of made me step out of my comfort zone and learn more about like what I want to do and what I believe in. Places like the chaplain's office and the Niebuhr Center for Faith and Action give me safe places where I can go to discuss my faith and to discuss my values with people that I know I trust and people that I know I can count on to influence me and to lead me in the right direction. You can never be forced out of your faith or forced into a different kind of faith as long as you're at Elmhurst. That you really are given the, the ability to, to take your pick and always have encouragement from your peers. Never shunned or excluded or pressured into something else. Or there's always a place for you. If you believe you're here on this earth for a reason, that's gonna affect the way you live your life. That's gonna affect the way you treat your academics, the way you treat your social life, the way you look at your future and the goals that you have. That, that Those things seem like really big things, but all of that boils down to like the way you live your everyday life. We value intellectual excellence, community, social responsibility, stewardship, faith, meaning, and values. Last year we had all of our girls leave except me and another girl, so we kind of got put into our captain positions. And it's not that I didn't want to do it, but I didn't know if I was ready to take that leadership role yet. But because I was thrown into it, I had to do it, so it helped me 
as a person and to help lead the dance team and be in control. I mean, it's difficult at sometimes, no doubt about it. It's very stressful sometimes, but I probably, as much as I complain about it, I probably wouldn't change it for the world because it's making me who I am today. I have had a great experience at Elmhurst. I'm obviously involved with the volleyball program and it's been a really good experience for me. I would say we're pretty close because we practice five days a week for two and a half hours. We're lifting, we're doing bonding things, and we're traveling on the weekends. So you're pretty much with these girls for three months every single day for hours. So we're all pretty close and we rely on each other and ask each other for help. I've had a great experience at Elmhurst, I really have. I think that the college is all about making the individual like well-rounded, and uh, I do think that I have grown up a lot since I've been at college. I've played soccer, and I'm in the nursing program, and I, um, I lived on campus for two years. It's been great, and I've made so many new friends, and um, there's just so much here to offer. I just love it. I really like doing the dance team because I've been dancing since I was three, so coming here and joining the dance team was an obvious choice of something that I'd wanted to do. The whole experience for me is a confidence builder and being able to connect with students in the crowd, not even to know them, but just to get them to smile while you're at a game, I think that's such a great feeling to know that you know someone might have been having a bad day and they come and watch you dance and maybe it's one of their favorite songs in the world that makes them smile no matter what. I mean, and to be able to be a part of that and to connect to somebody in that manner, I think that's a really cool experience to share in. Wrestling here has been great. I've been able to achieve some of my goals I've set for myself and I guess coming to a smaller school in wrestling, I got to be able to start right away and wrestle every year so far. Coming here and be able to compete right away is, is great. Coming into college, I really didn't know what I was going to do. I was undecided, and then going through taking classes, I figured out what I wanted to do. I want to work with other people, like with, with kids, and help them develop. The balance with athletics in school, it's just, with me, I did it all throughout high school, so it was, I needed to do sports in order to stay focused. I was injured my freshman year, and I just felt like so off track. It didn't feel natural. Like, I think a lot of the students coming from high school and coming to D3, it's like what they need to stay focused. I mean, if you could do it in high school, you could do it here. You can just join the team and just have fun. It's nice having like that other family, aside from like, you know, being at home. Don't be afraid to go out there and try new things. Back for the second half of action on BlueJTV.com. My name is Kevin Jude. Glad you could be with me this afternoon as Elmhurst and Milliken locked in a CCAW battle. Elmhurst coming in an 11 and 8 overall record, 5 and 3 in the conference. Meanwhile, Milliken struggling 7 and 12, 0 and 8 in the CCAW. But they are dead even at 36 all through the first 20 minutes. Milliken shooting 51.7% from the floor, but Elmer's doing the job on the offensive glass. 10, 11 offensive rebounds for the Blue Jays have helped them overcome a 33% shooting. Leading score for Elmer's Michaela Eppert, 14 points, five boards. Hannah Henderson off the bench has seven rebounds, six on the offensive side. Elmer's ball to start things out in the second half as starters both ways. Here's Eppert in the paint, off the glass, score it. Blue Jays back in front, 38-36. Eppert has 16 now. Leads all scorers in this contest. Milliken, here's Schultz. Around the left side, pulls up from 10, no good. Rebound grabbed by Hoyer, and she's fouled. Schultz had seven in the opening half to go with four points. Sacklek was the leading scorer for the Big Blue. Eight points, four boards. Devin Curry had five. Kelly Skorczewski, we mentioned, 
averaging just 1.9 coming in, has seven already in just eight minutes of play. Substitution, Erica Johnson in as Coomer heads out. Schultz will trigger the inbound, trying to feed it into Curry. It's poked away by Logan. Logan saw just five minutes in the opening half. Didn't see much action in that second quarter. Back on the floor to start things in the, in the second half, though. Milken having some trouble getting it in. They finally do to Hoyer. She'll hand back to Weber and they'll reset. Schultz starts to drive, kick back Sacklick up top of the key. Works her way in, now hands back out to Curry. Down to 15 to shoot, puts on the brakes, looks for Sacklick, instead will put it in the hands of Schultz. Schultz tried to feed it inside to Sacklick, stolen away by Eppard, and the Blue Jays have some numbers. Three on three if they hurry. Here's Jones down the right side of the trailer. Logan back out is Jones. She will hold on and let Elmhurst set up offensively. Jones looking for Eppard down low, doesn't have her. Here's Logan with 10 to shoot. Dump pass from Monroe, stolen away down low by Schultz. Here comes Milliken, two on one to the basket. Sacklet goes up and she is almost stripped by Monroe. Monroe did a fantastic job of tying her up on the way up. It last touched by Monroe, but it will be a Milliken ball. Look at the defensive play by Claire Monroe coming around the other side of Sacklet and just tying her up to force that ball out of bounds. Battle inside between Johnson and Hoyer. Driving in is Curry, puts on the brakes, in the paint, goes up through strong off the back iron. Eppert has the rebound, she covers up and is fouled by Milliken. Hoyer whistled, whistled for the foul, that is her third. The junior tallest player on the floor for Milliken in foul trouble now with three. Not even two minutes into the third quarter. Claire Monroe, bounce pass to Eppert, back to Monroe. Step behind the arc, pulls up, no good. Rebound fought for in the corner, Sacklick has it. Outlets to Schultz, Schultz three on two if she hurries. She will slow things down and let Milliken set up offensively. Weber on the left wing. Schultz in low, it comes to Sacklick and she's fouled as Johnson came across and got her over the arm. Into the corner it goes to Curry, driving baseline around Monroe to, or around Logan rather to the basket and scores it. Back even at 38-38. Driving in is Logan, kicks out to Jones out on the wing. Back to Monroe, looks for Eppard. Instead goes to Johnson on the left side. Underneath, reverse layup by Jones. Kayla Jones, the good shot. Johnson finds her wide open, cutting baseline. Elmhurst back in front by a bucket. Driving in is Curry, trying to feed it inside to going. She's tied up before the shot and fouled. So that's the third personal on Johnson. Stidham back in for the Blue Jays. And Skorczewski gets her first look in the second half for Milliken. Skorczewski has it high up top for the Big Blue. Here's Schultz now. Starts to spin her way in. Leaves for Sacklack. She goes baseline, but it's cut off by Eppard. And now they're gonna get an offensive foul going against Sacklick. See if you can see it on the replay. Yep, moving in, moved right into and just shouldered down. Monroe 
for the moving screens of 40 to 38. Elmer's by two. Logan for Jones out on the left wing. Looks for Eppard. And now a whistle away from the ball. And they're going to get the big blue for Skorczewski, her second. So three fouls apiece for each squad. Still one to give in the quarter. Here's Stidham underneath to Jones going up, and she's stripped on the way up by Curry. Taken away by the big blue. Here's Milliken the other way, knifing in as Weber. Puts on the brakes, and they'll reset. Skorczewski now to Curry. Looking for Sacklack, now drives on Eppard instead. Cut off nicely, bounce pass to Sacklack. Back out, Schultz for three. Left it short off the front rim. And they're going to get another foul on Sacklick. She completely just boxed into Eppard and just pushed her out of the way. You'll see it here on the replay. Watch the body of Sacklick underneath. Bump, bump, bump underneath her. And they're going to get that foul almost every time. Going comes in as Sacklick heads out with her third. Eppard trying to go find Logan underneath and let her too far over her head out of bounds, a turnover on the Blue Jays. Elmers just a two-point lead, unable to build on it so far as both teams struggling to find points here early on. Elmers with four, Milligan with just two through the first four minutes. Give and go, bounce pass for Schultz, goes up, missed the layup, but she's fouled in the process as they will tag Monroe for this foul. Schultz will shoot a pair, hits the first, 40 to 39. One more for Schultz, that one short off the front rim. Monroe has the board for the Blue Jays. Monroe will push it up the far sideline right in front of the Elmhurst bench. Eppard trying to post up inside, here's Stidham. Spins in the corner, they'll work it back around to Jones. Trying to feed Eppert, it's deflected by Skorczewski and stolen away by going. Weber will bring it up in front of the big blue bench. Skorczewski, they're gonna back off her, let her have that shot if she wants it, won't take. Kick back out to Weber, lob it across. Knifing in, scoop layup, no good. And Stidham has the board. Capellas missed the shot. Here's Hannah Henderson dribbling into some traffic. They'll put it in Kayla Jones' hand. She'll move it back around the arc. Henderson looking for Eppard. Jones, open three, takes it on its way. Short off the front rim. Rebound collected by Going. Inside, going to the basket is Schultz. She lost her footing, traveling. Curry going to come back to the floor for the Big Blue. Summerlin back for Elmhurst. 4-32. We said both teams struggling to score right now. Five and a half minutes, just seven combined points so far in this quarter. Elmhurst holding that one point cushion. Summerlin. To Stidham. Back to Jones, lines up the three, good! <laughs> Kayla Jones knocks down the triple and Elmhurst will take a timeout, a 30 second timeout. Blue Jays lead it now by four, 43 to 39. See a lot of pink in the stands, Milliken wearing pink today as well. It's the coaches versus cancer contest to raise money for cancer awareness, having some fundraising and raffles taking place throughout the contest today. 43-39 Elmhurst, you look at the numbers right now, and Elmhurst was shooting 
33% at the break, 12 of 36. At present, they're up to 35.7, 15 of 42. Milliken was shooting 51% at halftime. It's down to 47% now. Elmhurst still winning the battle on the glass, though. 28 to 21 total and a big number, 11 to 3. To the basket is Weber. Her shot won't fall. Elmers has the rebound. Second chance points. Blue Jays owning this one. 12 to nothing with all those offensive rebounds. Trying to feed Eppert inside. It's poked away by Skorczewski. Elmers ball under the basket with 18 on the shot clock. Summerlin gets it into Spencer. Eppert drives in off the left wing, goes up in traffic, and she travels. Turnover gives the ball back to Milliken. Elmhurst holding on to that four-point lead. Nearing three and a half minutes to go. Schultz to Curry. Capellas lines up the three and connects. Makes it a one-point game, 43-42. As Milliken, just their second bucket of the quarter. Jones will take the three. Rattles in, off no good. Rebound belongs to Elmhurst. Henderson crashing the boards again. I mean, not be credited with that one, but certainly help the Blue Jays get possession. Here's Summerlin for three from the wing. That one off the front rim, no good. Rebound fought for, and it'll be Elmhurst ball again. The Blue Jays continuing to out-rebound Milliken on the offensive glass. And the story of this game and how Elmhurst has overcome a little bit of a difficult shooting night while Milliken's had that hotter hand from the field. Henderson driving in, in traffic. Her layup won't go. Eppard's got the board. Another second chance for the Blue Jays. That one won't go. Eppard, a fourth chance for Elmhurst. Four straight offensive boards for the Blue Jays. Lob in for Eppard, and they throw it away. Eppard had the step on her defender. Summerlin just let her too far underneath. Elmhurst, cold from downtown, just three of 17 in this contest, 17.6%. Going, bounce pass to Skorczewski, right back to going. Schultz to Weber, has Curry on the right side, doesn't go that way, works on Spencer, drives in and she's tied up and stolen, oh, excuse me, it'll be a jump ball, belongs to Milliken. Nice job by Jones coming from the back side. Grabbed a hold. and tied it up. They're gonna reset that shot clock back down to 11 since possession stayed to Milliken. Lob into Weber to Curry. Shot clock down to eight. Curry working on Summerlin. Gets around her with the left hand and scores. Milliken back in front, 44 to 43. No help came on the play from the Blue Jays. Curry to Jones. Rotate around. Spencer starts to drive in, leaves for Henderson. Milligan doing a nice job on Eppard this half, trying to limit her touches in the paint. Shot clock down to 10. Jones spins in traffic, goes up and she's fouled. Foul will go against Curry. Now the official is going to come over and talk, and they had not reset the arrow after that jump ball. Get that corrected. Jones will go to the line. Chance to tie things up or put Elmhurst in front. And she ties it up with the first, 44 all. Alex Capellas, the senior, back in. 
for the Big Blue. Even at 44, a buck 47. That one too strong. Rebound grabbed by Schultz and the Big Blue. Emily Schultz, the sophomore guard out of Groveland, Illinois. Here's Capellis. Leaves it inside. And it is just taken away by Spencer. Kelsey going was trying to go to the bucket and Spencer just ripped it away. Here's Jones driving in, looking for the dish for Eppard. She has it. Kicks back to Henderson going in, swatted. Was it touched? Officials looking for some help. And no, they're gonna say it was not touched. So a turnover against the Blue Jays. Gives it back to the Big Blue with 114. Game dead even at 44. Very little scoring this quarter. Just eight points for each team. Henderson pokes it loose, almost stole that one. Shot clock winding down to eight. Henderson gets a hand on it again, and now they're going to get her for a foul. Poked it loose momentarily, but held onto the arm as she was trying to get to the, to the loose ball. That is the fifth team foul against the Blue Jays, though, so that will put Capellas to the free throw line. Chance to put Milliken in front with 52.4 left to go in the quarter. Free throw falls. So Milliken back in front. Stidham comes back for Elmhurst. 12 lead changes, eight ties in this contest so far. There's another one. Hits both free throws for Capellas. Milliken by two, 52 seconds to go. Spencer to Jones. Lost her dribble, needs some help, finds Summerlin wide open. Had Stidham momentarily, but couldn't get the pass down to her. Henderson. Back to Summerlin, to Henderson, to Jones. Inside, Stidham goes up to the basket, and she's fouled by Schultz coming over the top. So Stidham will go to the line here for the Blue Jays to shoot two. She's got two points on the game so far. Make it three. Katie Swanson comes in for Elmhurst. Curry for Milliken. Erica Johnson heads to the floor for Elmhurst as well. Annette Stidham can tie it up here with a free throw. That one no good. Henderson with another offensive board, but throws the pass away. Elmer's had a chance to hold it down for one, to play for one. Instead, it'll be Milliken ball. Shot clock off. 28.1 on the game clock. Milliken holding on to a one-point lead. Here's Curry. Leads for Schultz. Clock winds down to 20. Starts to drive in. Dribbles it off her foot. Taken away by the Blue Jays. Spencer ahead to Stidham with 12. Blue Jays have time. Here's Swanson. Shot game clock down to seven seconds. Swanson starting to drive in. Tries to go baseline. Cut off and a blocking foul going to go against Milliken. Swanson just initiates the contact that time as going slid over. See from the replay, looked like she got there a touch late. So Swanson can put Elmers in front if she can hit both of these. 3.3 left in the quarter. Sinks the first, one more to come. One more free throw for Katie Swanson, the Elmhurst senior. Hits them both. Blue Jays back in front, 47-46. Another tie, another lead change. And Lori Kearns wants a timeout.
So Milliken will take the 30 second timeout, try to draw something up here with 3.3 seconds left to go in the quarter. As the first horn sounds from the timeout, look at the numbers on this game so far. Shooting percentages even out a little bit. Elmer still at 32.6%. Milligan down a touch at 48.6. The difference so far has been Elmer's overcoming that difference with the offensive rebounding. Milligan will let it go from half court just before it was Curry. Got a look, left it well short. So your score after three quarters and 30 minutes of play, it's Elmhurst 47, Milliken 46. Numbers after three quarters, the Blue Jays 32.6%, 15 of 46. Milliken 48.6%, 18 of 37. Neither team that impressive from downtown today. Two of eight for the Big Blue at 25%. Blue Jays really struggling, just three of 17 at 17.6%. Elmer's doing it from the foul line though, 14 of 18, Milliken eight of 10. But how about these numbers on the glass? Elmer's 34 total rebounds, Milliken 22, a plus 12 for the Blue Jays, and a plus 13 on the offensive side. 16 to three on the offensive glass for the Blue Jays. Games had nine ties, 13 lead changes. And the points off turnovers, 13 to five in favor of the Big Blue, but second chance points off to all those offensive rebounds for the Blue Jays, 12 to zero. Milliken not able to generate many second chance opportunities at all. So fourth quarter, we'll reset the floor for the Blue Jays. Jones, Swanson, Monroe, Coomer, and Eppard for Milliken, Weber, Schultz, going, Sacklack, and Curry. Coomer leaves for Eppard, starts to drive in, back out Coomer. And Coomer shuffled her feet, called for the travel. Not what you wanted if you're the Blue Jays. Hand the ball right back to Milliken, 14 seconds in. A seesaw battle so far. Elmhurst holding on to a one point lead. The Blue Jays working left to right on your screen. There's a lob inside for going. Easy two. No one defending going on the roll. So Milliken back in front by two. Monroe looks for a screen from Eppard. Now tries to feed Eppard. It's kicked by the Big Blue. It'll stay where it is. Elmer's ball, 15 exactly on the shot clock. Jones gets it into Eppard. Eppard off the glass, no. And a loose ball foul going to be called on Coomer on the rebound. So Milliken ball underneath. And Coomer now has four personal fouls. Here's Weber driving on Jones. Cut off, has to go baseline, will pull it back out to the corner. Sacklack working on Eppard, stolen away by Eppard. Monroe drives in, Swanson open three, good! Katie Swanson connects from downtown. Blue Jays back in front by a pair. 50-48, 8.40 to go. Sacklack to Schultz with Monroe working on her defensively. Now they switch. Eppard steps in front, going around her. Schultz just too quick, gets around Eppard. Reverse layup is good, and we're even at 50. Here's Swanson driving on Weber, looking to hand off to Coomer. It's not there. 
Instead, it's Jones. Jones knifes to the basket, goes up, and she's fouled. If that's on Sacklick, that's four. And it is. Four fouls now on Sacklick. The leading score for the Big Blue, averaging nearly a double-double entering tonight's contest. Kayla Jones hits the first. Sacklick will go to the bench now with four. She's got eight points and five boards. Schultz is actually the leading scorer for Milliken tonight. Sacklick the leader on the season. Jones hits both Blue Jays in front by two. Rachel Weber will push it up for the Blue Jays, or excuse me, for the Big Blue rather. Milliken in the pink uniforms, working right to left on your screen. Steps inside the free throw line, jump shot no good by Schultz. Rebound battled for, taken away by Monroe. Elmhurst is not giving Milliken any second chance opportunities. Swanson on the baseline feed to Jones, she hits the layup. Beautiful pass from Katie Swanson. Finds Jones going baseline and the Blue Jays up by four. Ball comes loose, they'll blow it dead. A little conversation between the officials and Monroe and two Milliken players. Not sure what that was all about if the ball just got knocked out after the bucket. But nonetheless, we're back underway now. Ball back in play, Elmhurst by four. Matching their biggest lead of the night. Weber trying to feed it in baseline for going. Does a nice job to save it. Just throws it off the leg of Eppard. Wasn't the greatest pass from Weber, but a nice job by Kelsey going, saving that one on the baseline. Schultz to inbound underneath to Curry. Her short, short uh, shot short off the front rim. Say that three times fast. The rebound is grabbed by Swanson, and she's proper, uh, promptly fouled by the Big Blue. Curry with three now, and another defensive board, and a lack of an offensive board for Milliken. Elmers looking to build on that four point cushion. Coomer has it out in the right corner. To Swanson. Thought about going in. Kicks out Coomer for three. Too long, but Swanson's there for the board. Another offensive glass for Elmhurst. Bounce pass to Eppard. Starts to drive in. Spins with the left hand. No. And the rebound grabbed by going. Weber. Pushed ahead of nearly stolen away by Monroe. And now they're going to get a foul in front of the bench from Milliken for Monroe for bumping the Milliken player into the bench out of bounds. So her second, team second, you can see it on the replay. A little bit body there, but the call that foul, don't want to call it a turnover, call the foul on the contact. Milliken will inbound to Weber. 25 on the shot, 6.40 on the game clock, and that'll pass through the hands of Capellas, taken away by Swanson. Three on two for Elmhurst. To Monroe with the left hand, no, in and out. And the rebound will belong to Milliken. Golden opportunity missed for the Blue Jays is a two on one. As Milliken will push up with 6.25 to go. Elmhurst still holding onto that four point lead, unable to build on it just yet. Gorcheski to Schultz, trying to feed it inside. She throws that one away, leading Hoyer way too long. Hoyer out there with three personal fouls. Curry and Going have three as well. Elmhurst inbounds to Monroe, and it's stolen away by Milliken, and an Elmhurst foul. Watch the replay on this one. Pass off the fingertips of Monroe. It was grabbed by Milliken, some body contact, and now Monroe in foul trouble. She'll go to the bench with four.
Here's Schultz to the basket. Just eight up the Elmhurst defense, scores it. And Milliken back within to within two. Coomer feeds it in for Eppard. One dribble back out Henderson. Jones wide open three. Off the front rim, no, and Milliken has the defensive board. Skorczewski wrapping that one up. We'll hand off to Weber. Milliken can tie with a two or take the lead with a three. Capellas hands off Schultz, tries to feed it inside, stripped away by Elmhurst. Eppert comes up with the steal. Henderson will slow it down now for the Blue Jays. Coomer to Swanson. Looking for Eppert, Jones finds her. One dribble, back out Henderson. Lobbing again, Eppert, one dribble, left hand to the glass, no. Rebound loose, fought for, Schultz had it momentarily. Henderson takes it away, her shot's rejected, but the Blue Jays have the rebound. And 25 on the shot clock. It was Hoyer with the block down low. Eppert kicks out, Coomer with a step around her defender in traffic, lost the handle. Off of Coomer, it'll be Milliken ball. Ori Kearns wants a timeout on the sideline. I don't know if they've seen it yet. Now they do. Couple subs for each team. This will be a full timeout for the Big Blue. So timeout Milliken, 54-52 in favor of Elmhurst. Look at some of the stats right now. Milliken out shooting Elmhurst 48.8% to 30.9%. Ice cold are the Blue Jays from downtown, four of 20. Elmhurst getting it done in two areas. One, they're 16 of 20 from the foul line. Milliken eight of 10, 80% for both teams. But the story on this one, the, if Elmhurst is able to come away and hold on for a victory, it's gonna be because of the rebounding right now. 20 defensive rebounds for the Blue Jays. They're plus 11 overall, 38 to 27, and a plus 15 on the offensive glass. Milliken with just three second chance opportunities, Elmhurst with 18. The big story though is Elmhurst has been stuck on 12 with that second chance point for quite a while. So Milliken will bring it back up. Going. Looks for Hoyer, doesn't have her. Leaves for Weber, back to going. Hoyer working on Coomer. Hands back up. Capellas gets away with a travel. Now spins her way free and goes up and that shot no good. Offensive board, first in a long time for Milliken by going and her shot won't go. Elmers clinging to that two point lead with 4.15 to go. Very low scoring second half. Feed inside to Eppard. Goes up and lays it in. Nicely done by the Blue Jays. The lead pass to Eppard around her defender and the Blue Jays back up by four with under four to go. Here's Weber. Cut off. This is Kelsey going. Back out. Weber will take the long three off the front rim. Hoyer's got the board. Turnaround off the glass is good. Nicely done by Emma Hoyer. The junior knocks down the turnaround jump shot, brings the big blue back to within two. Jones finds Henderson over to Coomer. Coomer looking for Henderson down low. She's wrapped up and fouled. Milliken had two fouls to give, so this is still a non-shooting situation. Other than that being Curry's fourth foul, Sacklack is back on with four now as well. As Curry goes out along with going. Schultz back along with Sacklack. Henderson to inbound and will lob it in to Swanson. Jones, open three from the wing, good! 
Kayla Jones dials long distance. Elmhurst has a five point cushion. Their biggest of the night. Blue Jays trying to put this one away. Schultz gets a screen. Jumper from Sacklack from the free throw line is good. Sacklack knocks down the 15 footer, brings Milliken within three. Under three to go at 247. Jones has it out in the right corner to Eppard. Ball above her head looking for Coomer. Instead, three from Henderson is good. The Blue Jays, who struggled from three-point range most of this contest, have gone back-to-back -back from downtown and have opened up a six-point cushion, their largest lead of the contest, with 2.36 left to play. And Tethy Carrillo will call timeout for the Blue Jays. Hannah Henderson having herself another good ball game. She has seven points now after the triple to go along with a co-leading nine rebounds. Her and Eppard both have nine. Henderson with eight of those nine coming on the offensive side. Meanwhile, Michaela Eppard, one rebound shy of a double-double. 18 points for her to go along with nine rebounds. And how about the game of Kayla Jones, too? Seven of 17 shooting from the floor. She's got a game-high 20 points, leading all scores in so far. For Milliken, Sacklack, the only player, excuse me, Sacklack and Schultz, both in double figures. 12 and five rebounds for Schultz, 10 and five boards for Sacklack, going the leading rebounder with six. So Milliken, down six, will push it up. Weber has Capellas to her right. Instead, we'll hand to Sacklack up top. Put it into the hands of Schultz. This is Capellas. Works around the screen, tries to go inside around Jones, scores it with a layup. Elmers has been slow getting there defensively. Mill can be able to work around, drive around their defenders to the bucket. It's a four-point Elmers lead with 2.10 to go. Lob into Eppert. Nice bounce pass to Coomer. Goes up, counted in the foul. Beautiful look from Michaela Eppert to Michaela Coomer. Jones with the lob inside, has Coomer wide open. Great job to not take the initial shot. Gets around, the, goes underneath her defender, got the shot to go and was fouled in the process. Coomer for the three point play, connects. And that foul went on Sacklick. She is done. So the Big Blues season leading scorer out of this contest now with two minutes to go and her squad down by seven. Capellas will take the three, left it short off the front rim. Coomer has the board and Elmers can take their time with a buck 45. And here, Tethany Carrillo calling for patience on the Elmhurst sideline. Seven point lead and the ball, 15 to shoot. As we're down to 90 seconds to go in this contest. 10 on the shot clock now. Jones looks up, sees it. Backs her way in, goes up. Shot no good off the front of the iron. Rebound collected by Schultz. Ahead to Sadler. Here's Capellas. Milliken with 115, a little too much time for the Big Blue as they're down by seven. Schultz starts to drive in, picks up her dribble, has to come back to Capellas. Swanson on her. Capellas cut off, lost it on the way up, but nicely finds a feed underneath the hoop to going. Looked like she lost it, but recovered almost in midair. Let's see, Angel had to kind of change her mind going up in the air. Beautiful feed underneath to going, who scores the layup and cuts the Elmhurst lead down to five. 65-60 with 59.8 seconds to go. Timeout called by Lori Kearns and Milliken. The Big Blue trying to find their first conference victory of the season. They came in 0 and 8. They're seven, uh, excuse me, seven and two overall on the year. 
or seven and 12 rather. Meanwhile, Elmhurst, 11 and eight, looking for win number six, trying to stay in the hunt for a CCAW title. They came in just one game back. Jones will push it up to Henderson, has Swanson wide open. Let's see if Milken's gonna take a foul or try to get a stop here. And now they're gonna take that foul as they come out and hit Swanson. They did not have any more to give. Their fourth foul was on the one from underneath the basket on the three-point play from Coomer. So it's two shots the rest of the way here for the Blue Jays. Katie Swanson, the senior for the Blue Jays, will go to the line. First one rattles out. Substitutions for Milliken. Curry back, Weber back as well. Swanson has five points on the night. Make it six. Six point Elmhurst lead. Courtney Spencer back for the Blue Jays. Milliken will get it in. Driving in, Weber off the glass, no, and the rebound grabbed by Coomer, and now she's fouled. So the Blue Jays can all but ice this one here from the foul line. The fourth personal foul goes to Hoyer. Swanson with two more. Senior's got six on the night. First one rattles around and off the back of the iron, no. So still just a two possession game with a couple of threes, Mill can get right back in. One more to come for Swanson. On its way, good. Three possession game now, 67-60 with under 40 seconds to go. Inbound comes to Schultz. She will bring it up quickly. They're gonna attack the basket around Spencer. No good, rebound fought for. The rebound's gonna to go to Eppard, and Hoyer is gonna foul out in the process. Eppard had position. Hoyer crashed into her. That's number five now on Hoyer. As Kelsey Going will get up off the bench and replace Emma Hoyer. Eppard can add to her totals on the game. Has a double-double, 18 and 10 right now. To go along with three assists. Make it 19 and 10. Can equal Kayla Jones for the team lead with 20 points if she can knock down this one. 68-60, 30, 31.5 seconds, no good. Rebound grabbed by Goings. Schultz has it, about a two second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. Fires up an air ball, trying to pull up from behind the arc. Capella's tried to save it, the rebound cleared by the Blue Jays, a whistle and a foul now by Milliken. as Katie Swanson with another return trip to the line. Four of six from the stripe so far tonight. She's got seven points. Knocked down a big three here this half. Hits the first free throw. Hits them both. Elmer's coming alive in the second in the fourth quarter. 23 to 14. How much they've outscored the big blue by. Here's Sadler. Goes up with the left hand, gets the layup to fall, and Milliken will call a timeout. 70 to 62 with 11.2 second shift. The big blue not ready to concede this one just yet, but it is a least a three-possession game with 11.2 seconds left. Elmer's just had their biggest lead of the night at 10 points. <clears throat> Down to eight with 11.2 on the clock. Gorcheski comes back in for the big blue. Let's see if Milliken's gonna foul and put Elmers to the line again. Shot 
try for a steal here on the inbounds. Elmer's had some trouble inbounding earlier this year. There's the second horn. Ball handed to Jones. She'll trigger the inbounds. Having some trouble and a timeout called by Tethany Carrillo. So the Blue Jays will call a timeout after unable to get the ball in. Still with that eight point cushion. When this one's over, we'll run you down with some final numbers. And don't forget Elmhurst and Milliken men's basketball. That's coming your way next. Luke Tanaka on the call. Seventy sixty two Elmhurst because they called timeout under the basket under the new rules this year that ball will advance to the half court right in front of Elmhurst bench now. They get it into Jones lost the handle on it it's poked loose by Schultz she tracks down the loose ball six seconds goes to the basket misses the layup Jones the rebound and she can dribble it out here for the Blue Jays as the final seconds ticks off the clock and the Blue Jays come away with the victory 70 to 62. And as we'll take a quick look at the numbers, Elmhurst with the win, 12 and 8 overall, 6 and 3 in the CCIW. Milliken 7 and 13, 0 and 9 in league play. Elmhurst moves to within a half game of first place in the standings, trailing Wheaton and Illinois Wesleyan by just half a game, well, one back in the loss column. Overall numbers look like this team-wise, the Blue Jays Shot just 34.4%. Milliken outshot him 46.4%. 26 to 56 for the Big Blue. 21 to 61 for Elmhurst. 6 of 22 from downtown. 27.3%. Couple of those late that they needed. 2 of 10 from downtown for Milliken. Blue Jays get it done from the foul line though. 22 of 29, 75.9%. And they get it done on the glass. 44 to 31. A plus 13 for Elmhurst. And we mentioned the offensive discrepancy, 18 to five. Elmhurst leads it on the offensive rebounding side. Individual numbers look like this for Milliken. The leader is Schultz, finishing up with 12.6 boards. Sacklock had 10 boards to go along with five, uh, 10 points to go with five rebounds. Curry finished up with nine, seven points, uh, seven points apiece for Capellas and Skorczewski. Uh, for Elmhurst, 20 points for Kayla Jones, a game high. Seven of 18, two of six from downtown to go along with five rebounds and an assist. Michaela Eppert, another double-double, 19 points, 10 rebounds, and three assists. Katie Swanson off the bench to score nine for the Blue Jays. And Hannah Henderson, seven points, 10 rebounds, eight of those coming on the offensive side. Six points for Claire Monroe to go along with six rebounds and three assists. So that's how it finishes here. The final score, 70 to 62 in favor of Elmhurst. For producer, director, cameraman extraordinaire, Dennis, my name is Kevin Judas saying thanks for joining us here. So long, everybody.